Good evening. It's great to have you all here on this fabulous Thursday night. My name is Sandy Coyne Gilbert. I have the honor of being the program director of the MSOL program at Goodwin University for almost four years. And I can honestly say this is one of the, my favorite things that I've done in my entire time here. Before I introduce one of our graduate students who will introduce our keynote speaker, a big thank you to Goodwin University's Office of Student Affairs under the leadership of Vice President Dr. Tyrone Black, as well as Career Services under the wonderful leadership of Stephanie Hurt. I'd also like to recognize Goodwin's Vital Voices program run by Ms. Hannah Granfield, the Director of Foundation Relations. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Ben Travers, Marty Levine, and Goodwin's incredible marketing and communication department for their instrumental support in pulling all this whole evening together. I'm excited to welcome our friends from the University of Bridgeport who are joining us for this event. Welcome. I do want to let everyone know this keynote presentation is being recorded for students who wish they could be here but can't. So please mute your mics. This recording will be available to everyone in a few weeks. Kaplan has also asked that if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and he'll answer them as he goes along. Our speaker is someone I am very familiar with and I sincerely appreciate the power of his work. I remember back in 2009, times were tough for graduates to find jobs. Students often knew what they studied in the classroom, but they could not translate that knowledge into some proof they were the right candidate for a job. Despite my commitment to their education and to their success post-education, I realized that none of us at the school had the tools to really help them. At that precise time, a colleague placed a copy of Kaplan Mowbray's book, 10 Ks of Personal Branding, into my hand. I read it cover to cover three times and realized this was really a gift. Kaplan is many things. He's energetic, he's dynamic, he's inspiring, he's insightful. His words are simple, but the power becomes immediately obvious. Students could find the words and the abilities within themselves to convince employers they were different, they were better, they were the candidate for this job. Students could discover their personal brand and learn to draw attention to what differentiated them. Kaplan's assurance that knowing yourself and sharing that knowledge was the key to success in job search was incredibly important. And here's the most important thing for me. Finally, students could have the answers to the horrible dreaded question, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I can say this without hesitation tonight, you will be energized and your career aspirations will be reignited. You will also feel better about yourself in the process. Kaplan is someone who will speak to you no matter where you are in your career journey. I urge you to realize this evening is here for you. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to finally have this night happen. Though I might have been familiar with Kaplan's work, it has influenced me as a career coach for 12 years. I had not met him until we began to prepare for this evening. I remain always one of his biggest fans. Like Stephanie Hertz said, he has energized me and given me hope during a year when so many of us have been struggling personally and professionally to see our way forward. Kaplan, thank you for the commitment to empowering people, all of us, to see our gifts and potential through the eyes of personal branding. Here to introduce Kaplan tonight and share his, bios, is, share his bio is one of our MSOL graduate students, Anastasia Harper. Anastasia is inspiring in her own right. She'll be graduating in spring 2022 with her master's degree in organizational leadership. Anastasia works at Hartford Healthcare, and she continues to grow in her interest in both leadership and empowerment. This is such a pleasure to turn the mic over to you, Anastasia. Thank you. Kathleen mm -hmm. Mowbray is one of the world's most dynamic and inspirational business speakers and award-winning author of the 10 Ks of Personal Branding. 
Kaplan graduated from the Wharton School of Businesses. He draws from his extensive corporate experience as a successful business executive where he led corporate marketing, advertising, brand development, and workforce diversity initiatives for Fortune 500 companies. Kaplan has received worldwide acclaim and numerous awards for his leadership and branding insights. He has been featured on CNN, Fox, Business Week, The Wall Street Journal, Ad Age, and shares his message to NFL players and fans annually at the Super Bowl. Prior to his speaking career, Kaplan served as a U.S. Diversity Programs Leader at Deloitte. Kaplan also serves on the Corporate Adversity Board of Alpha, the nation's largest Latino professional association. In his personal pursuits, Kaplan is a professional saxophone player. He also resides in West Nyack, New York, and is an active and civic and charitable organizations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I see you, Jason. I see you, Mike. I see you, Amanda Campbell. I see you, Cliff Thurmer. I see you, R-U-M, 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 I see you, Torres, I see you, Loretta Gagney, I see you, Ashley, I see you, Nikki Travers, I see you, Stephanie Hertz, I see you, Amanda Campbell, I see you, Kayla, I see you, Stacy Gatto, I see you, it is an absolute, Hannah, I see you, Jeff, I see you, Dr. Tyrone Black, I see you, it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you tonight, I see you, Elizabeth, Andrea Glidden, I see you. Nakia Washington, I know you're on. Ebony Manil, Kayla McGill, I see you. Samantha Pryor, I see you. Elizabeth Gianetta, I see you. Robert, it's awesome. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you tonight. Clarissa, thank you so much for joining us. And as we celebrate the power of your brand, and I'm looking at and I'm just celebrating all the people who are here with us. So I want to first just thank you for spending your evening with me and, and us tonight as we celebrate the power of your personal brand. Kate Botches, I see you. Ariel Robinson, I see you. Martin, Kayla, I see you. Melagbo, Mel, Melbogo Sidira, great name. I see you. Thank you so much for being with us. Today we're going to talk to you about the power of your personal brand. And, and, and the, the things that we do in our life to grow our careers, to celebrate the best of who we are, and to really understand that, you know, to be known for something in life is, is to create value in life. And, and whether you're a graduate student, you're faculty, staff, administration, you know, or you're looking to really help support someone else, understand that, you know, being in the game of life means being present in your own presence. And one of the ways that you do that is to understand the power of your personal brand. So today I'm going to share with you thoughts and perspectives around this principle I call the 10 Ks of personal branding. And my sole goal is that we leave here better, more inspired to continue to show up to life and to our careers with the focus on the power of our brand and maximizing what we're known for. So before we start, I always like to start by having a little bit of fun. So tell me if you guys can hear this. Let's see. We're going to go. All right. Can you tell me if you guys can hear this? Can you guys hear that? Ashley, can you hear that? One, two, three, four. Mike, can you hear that? One, six, seven, eight. One, two. I see you, Kayla. I see you, Amanda. I see you, Ron. I see you, Cliff Thurmer. I see you, Jason Saga. I see you. Two, three, four. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you and start our night off like that. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into our talk tonight around personal branding. If you have a question, a thought, perspective, something that sparks you, please drop it in the chat and we're going to address it right on the spot. Thank you so much, Samantha. Thank you, Ebony. I see you. Thank you. Maybe some more. If we get some time, Andrew, I'll come back. We'll bring it back. All right. Let me share my screen now. All right. Let's see. And let me know. All right, good. We can see that. Perfect. So today we're going to talk to you about the part of your personal brand. So the first question I have for you tonight, uh, and before we start, uh, I always want to just start with, with this. And I'm looking through the, the speaker in the gallery view. If everyone could just take a deep 
breath. Just take a deep breath. <sighs> Let it out. One, one more, Stacy. <sighs> if you were blessed, honored, grateful to take that breath right now, understand that we have the opportunity to breathe life into our careers and, and to what we do for others. You know, this year has been a challenging year, as Sandy mentioned. And, you know, for many of us, you know, we, we took that breath and we're so glad to have it. You know, but a year ago, for some people, that breath was in question. You know, and for, for a year ago, some people never had an opportunity to take a new breath. So we're here tonight and we celebrate tonight that ability to take a breath, to breathe life into our careers, to focus on the power of our brand, to live with gratitude and to understand that, Stacy, tomorrow is a new day to create new possibilities just because you're in the game, because you're here, because you're showing up. So I want you to first drop in the chat. If you had to describe this last year with one word, if you had to describe this last year with one word, what would that one word be? Drop that in the chat. If you had to describe this last year with one word, what would it be? Someone said exhausting, heavy, relief, change, fantastic, uncertain, unthinkable, right? Surreal, stressful, challenging, roller coaster, awesome. unexpected. Busy. Think about it. If it described this last year with one word, upside down. Right, think about this. Think about the words that are coming back. Unexpected, busy, upside down, challenging, challenging, you know, change, annoying, reflective. Think about the words. Tough, Cliff, tough, tough year. Think about the words that are coming back as we look in our chat. Growth. Think about the words. This last year. The, the fact is this: we are all a symphony of perspectives. We've all faced things in different ways. And, we've, and, and the question is, how are we directing what we faced in our life over this last year to, to, to empower our career? You know, someone said unprecedented. Absolutely, Andrea, unprecedented. But how are we directing it? You are, con, you know, just like a conductor directs, you know, instruments and notes and harmony. We are a symphony of perspectives that come together. And that perspective really drives the value that we bring and how we see our life, the context in it. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. Yes. But now, if I ask you the question, if you think about high performance, you know, we're all in our careers to drive growth and value. If you think about high performance, if you had to describe this last year in the context of high performance, what would those words be? Drop that in the chat. If you think about high performance and think about this last year. If you had to, to, to give a word, some innovative, give a word that describes this last year in the, in the context of high performance, resilience, grit, strength, survival, creative, flexible. Look at these great words that are coming through. I creative, flexible, growth, growth, and more growth, innovative, innovative. We found new ways to do. We found new how to do, a new what to do, unstoppable. Nothing is giving your all, adaptable, revival. Look at these words, amazing words that are coming back in the chat, determination. It's so powerful and serving a greater need. Thank you, Jason. Serving a great in initiative, perseverance, new energy. I love it, Vivian. New energy, new energy. Now, the reality is, it's, it was the same question. We just had a, a different lens. You know, it was the same question, but we just had a different lens. So when you think about high performance, and, and you think about, you know, the, the, the words that came back when we asked the question in the context of high performance, growth, you know, when we asked it originally, it was, tra it was tough, it was hard, it was challenging, it was difficult. And then, then we said, if you think about high performance, it's about growth, it's about grit, it's about, you know, innovation, it's about growth, you know, and, and the new energy, perseverance, initiative. We are facing a new normal, yes. But really what we're facing is a now normal. It's what's your now norm? What are you going to do right now with everything that you learned, everything that you've become as a result of this last year? What are you going to do right now that shapes who you are and that creates your, your normal? Everyone who's listening on our, 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 our time together tonight, we should all know that we have been changed by this last year. We have been changed. And it's not about the new normal. It's about the now normal. Who are you now? And what is that now normal that is shaping, empowering your career, empowering you to, to sort of new heights, to innovate, to, to, to have more levels of tough reflection, more levels of gratitude, more intention in your brand? It is powerful when you embrace your now normal. So the question for us, you know, as change agents, which we all are, 
you know, we go and we study in our graduate work and in the work we do to help students and as faculty and the work that we do to learn, you know, it is we have to embrace change. And the question is, what's changed? What changes have you made? What has changed you and what will you change? I want you to drop in the chat, even an answer to one of those, or all those questions. What's changed for you? What changes have you made? What has changed you and what will you change? Drop that in the chat as you think about it. You know, the, the ability of everything you learned this year, the, 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 you know, think about what you're doing for your career and your life, you know, as a change agent, embracing everything, embracing your now normal, what's changed? Drop that in the chat. What changes have you made? Your values, absolutely, your values. The MSL program has changed me, absolutely. Your outlook, Robert, right? You believe in, the, in, the, in your worth, right? The way that we do daily business, our goal, our motivation, new problems, new opportunities. What is important? What matters, Jason? What really matters, right? Life has changed, jobs have changed, families and friends are closer, adapting differently to everything. I think about how powerful it is, right? Adaptability has become a strength. Adaptability has become a strength. Think about how powerful it is. What's changed you? What will you change? What changes have you made? And the power to pivot. The power to pivot. And to focus on the things that really are meaningful and matter, your perspective. Your people have changed. So as we think about this, the context of high performance and the how we show up, the how we manage our brand, right? The, the, the rules have changed. Thank you, Nikki. The rules have changed, right? We've lost close connections and we need to get some back. Absolutely. When you think about the context of high performance, imagine your brand and your career and your life. Understand that, that it's performance improvement in any facet capacity of life or career starts with a high performance mindset, a high performance mindset. And again, the question stayed the same, but the lens on the question was different. So in your life, your life is your life, but the, the lens you put on your life may really shape new opportunities, new confidence, new growth, new energy, new focus that powers you forward. So I could never start a session without acknowledging the changes that we've gone through and embraced this year that has made us all better. Because everyone on this, you know, Jason, I see everyone on this, we're in the business of better, better for our students, better, better we're going to Goodwin or University of Bridgeport to, to really help us in, empower a better career, maybe a better perspective for our life, you know, as leaders, you know, as, as faculty, as administrators, as leaders in the business or leaders of leaders, we want a better university, but we're in the business of making things better. And that's why it matters and to, to focus on your personal brand. That's why it matters. That's why it matters. So when you see this particular slide and image, I want you to tell me, just drop in the chat, what's going on here? What's your perspective on this? What's your lens on this? Take a look at this image. What's your lens? What's happening here? Someone said hope, right? new life, new birth. I love it. Or like new beginnings, new life. Right? Think of what's happening here, new life. What's happening? Take a look at this image. What's happening? Bloom where you are planted. I love it, Andrea. Bloom where you are planted. Old bub, old, I love it. Old bub, new terrarium. Right? New ideas create growth. Right, waiting to burst out, light, safe ship, right? Bloom where you are planted. I love that new environment. What's happening here? And think about your life in the context of what you see. What's happening here? You can grow in, un, in an unusual atmosphere. I love it, Clarissa. You can grow in an unusual atmosphere. We are reinventing. For many of us, this is what happened to us, and this is what's happened to us right now as we absorb all the nutrients of everything that we've gone through this year. We are unstoppable, Orlean. We are finding new ways to reinvent ourselves, Stacy. Bright ideas are coming, right? Bright ideas are coming. Anything can be accomplished. Hey, think about it. We can't be contained if we're focused on growth. Think about the ideas that come. Think about the nutrients of the soil. The, everything we learned this year is, is, is the soil that gives us an amazing opportunity to grow. We are nutrients. New ideas breeds new life. I love it, Clarissa. You can adapt to new situations, absolutely. Innovation, absolutely. So the takeaway here is this. Success is not a consequence, it's a process. I'm gonna say that again, Ashley. Success is not a consequence, it's a process. It's a process of growth. It's a process of new beginnings, new ideas that are breeding life, adapting to new situations, being unstoppable in what you do. Understanding that there is new circumstances around us, new limitations, but even in the new limitations of life, we can grow. 
and we're empowered to do so. And we embrace the process of success. Success is not a consequence. It's a process that we embrace with intention. And it's powerful for a brand. It's powerful for the university. It's powerful for you as a leader. It's powerful for you in shaping your career. Success is not a consequence. It's a process. So when we think about it, when someone meets you, and I know we have a lot of graduate students who are you know, looking for new opportunities, looking for, to shape your career, looking to present a new resume, a new level of credentials to someone who, who's going to hire you. When someone meets you, they, put, they place you into one of four buckets, typically. Can you help us improve something? Can you help us create something? Can you help us grow something? And can you help us shape something? And the question is, when people meet you, the question for all, all, all of us, when What's the, where do they place you? When people meet you, what's the context that they place you in? And, and, and are you relevant? You know, think about the, the, the perspectives, you know, that, that, that happen. But, you know, the, the, the perspectives that happen. If success is a process, that means that everything that you do, everything that you learn, you are, you are improving something in the process of success. You are creating something in the process of success. You're growing something in the process of success. You are shaping something in the process of success. And now you're relevant to create success or not. And that's the opportunity that we have by focusing on your brand. So think about it, you are improving the current state, creating new opportunities, growing the results and shaping the future, right? That, that's, that's, the, that's the opportunity here, Jason. That's the opportunity, Kareen. You know, when someone meets you, whether you're a leader in the business, you're a graduate looking to, to get a new opportunity, what are you going to help improve now? So your now normal is about improving the now. Even though you have degrees and you may get a couple of other degrees, the now, what can you help us improve now? That's what an employer wants to know. What, what new opportunities can you help us create? How can you help us grow a result that we need to grow? And how are you helping us shape the future? So the takeaway here for this particular segment is when you are looking to present yourself and your skills, understand that you have to be able to present yourself in the context of relevance. It's not enough to have a great resume. It's not enough to have a great set of degrees. You have to be relevant for the opportunity. Can you improve the current state of what we're trying to accomplish? Can you help us create new opportunities? Can you help us grow a result that we need to grow? And how can you help us shape the future? So when you think about this, it's the what you do, it's the who you become, and it's the result you create. The what you do, the who you become, and the result that you create. And if you're, you're listening and you ask yourself today, you know, who am I becoming in the process of, of, of success? Who am I becoming? And what's the result that you create based on who you are? And when you have a strong personal brand, it's, you have a strong personal brand because it creates a future result that improves something, that, that grows something, that shapes something, that creates something. And the brand that you build, it shapes the who you become, but it really shapes the result that you create. And that's why it's so important to understand the context of your brand, but also to be intentional about your brand. So when we think about this, the question is, how are you showing up? That's the real question. You know, and standing, you, know, you talked about your students, you talked about the power of helping them to find opportunity and giving them your know, advice, you know, and, and I appreciate, you know, you all these years, you know, taking a focus to, to with gratitude to really care. And, you, and Stephanie, you really care about your students in the way that they show up and present themselves and why it matters. But how are you showing up? That's the question for us all today. Are you improving something? Are you creating new opportunities? Are you growing the result? Are you shaping the future? You should never leave an interview without having communicated the context of how you are relevant to these particular four areas that matter in your career growth. So when you see this particular slide, I want you to drop in the chat, what are some things that, what are some words that come to mind when you see this slide? What are some words that come to mind when you see this slide? Drop it in the chat. What, what is, we see this slide and this perspective, what are some words that come to mind? Someone said fear, right? terror, terror, fear, terror, looking over the abyss, unprepared, unprepared, right? bravery, anxiety, new perspective, trust, trust, heavy, it's heavy, right? Trust, heavy, new perspective, you know, anxiety, you know, fear, inside, unsure, unsure, you're on a ledge and kind of unsure. There are a lot of questions. There are a lot of questions. You know, there are a lot of questions that come, you know, to the brink, a lot of questions. You know, for some people, it's, hey, the, 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 the ledge is my comfort zone, but the jump is the, is, the, is the adventure, beauty, stepping out of your comfort zone, new angle to see the world, a new angle, Nikki, to see the world, a new angle to see the world, my worldview for, for Goodwin, my worldview for Goodwin, altitude, right? extreme fear. You know, the, the fact is this, you think about 
this year and the context of your brand and the context of, of elevating your life, your career, your perspective, you got to understand this. We have to find new courage. We've all had to find new courage during this time. Find new courage for our, our, our brand, for, for our career, you know, for our life, for, for the, the balance that we, 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 you know, that we put forth to, to, to protect our families and, and our loved ones. We've had to find new courage. But the question is, and the perspective is, I want you to answer this question. What's something that you found new courage to do? I want you to drop that in the chat. What's something that you found new courage to do? What's something that you found new courage to do? Right, someone said to change. Thank you, Stacey, to try new things. And what's something you found new courage to do? All right, to, to enroll in grad school, absolutely. To seek help from others, to speak up, to speak up, to speak up, to speak up, to learn and lean into tough conversations, to release control, to use your voice, Kareem, to, loot, to use your voice, to work with challenging people, to embrace change. What's something you found new courage to do? To be more confident, to be confident in yourself. Think about the powerful perspective of the new cards that you found during this time and how it's changed you. you know, your brand, and if, if success is a process, the brand of courage, you know, the, the, what you do the, to, to, to find new courage, you, you know, to be inspired with new courage, changes you, but also empowers your brand to ask questions without hesitation, to move into uncharted territory. I love it. To move into uncharted territory. What's something you found new courage to listen to yourself? We've all found new courage. To dye your hair purple, I love it. To dye your hair purple, I love it, Amanda. To dye your hair purple, to reach out, right? to not be afraid of change. The, the courage that you found has shaped your brand. The courage that you have, have found you know, to go gray. So Amanda, you're, you're, you're curling your purple. Someone said they're going gray. Right? New courage to embrace change. So the perspective is this. There's three types of confidence that we must embrace uh, as it relates to our brand. And, and, and for the students who are, who, are, who are on and looking for opportunity, understand that the source of your confidence will also communicate the power and strength of your brand. So there's, you know, there's results confidence, um, you know, which is you know, the, the lessons learned from past results create future wins. And, you know, there, there's, and so whatever you did in the past, even prior to, to grad school, whatever you did in the past, uh, you know, it, it gives you a foundation to say, hey, I, I've created these results and maybe I can create these results for your organization if you hire me. You know, results confidence, so the strength, you, you draw confidence from your results. Effort confidence says, I'm committed to the effort to exceed expectations and do what others won't do to succeed. Oftentimes when you're going to get a job, people are looking at you not only for what you know and what you learned and the deg degrees you have from Goodwin or University of Bridgeport or others, they're looking at the effort that you're going to bring to this new opportunity, to this new environment. What are you going to do that maybe others aren't doing? What's the new perspective that you're bringing? And how is that shaping the fact that you are going to stand out as a candidate? Your effort confidence and then benefit confidence. Benefit confidence is empowered by empathy. And that means that you see a need. You see something that needs to be solved. You have empathy for something that could be improved. You know, and you want to be the one that creates that win-win solution to make it happen. When employers listen to you, and because you have empathy, that means that you have seen a need and you can be a solution. So when you're presenting yourself as a candidate for an opportunity, grad students who are on, understand that what is the solution that you are to a need that is known? And how does that shape your brand to be a valued asset relevant for the opportunity? Where you draw your strength of, your, where you draw your strength of confidence shapes your, the power of your brand, results, confidence, effort, confidence, benefit, confidence. The question I have for you is, is this first question, and you just you can put an A, B, C, or D in the chat. How would you describe the confidence you have in your brand today? Are you confident in your brand and how to leverage it for opportunities? That's A. Are you unsure about how to position yourself? Do you, you know, need to rebrand for future opportunities, or you kind of don't know where to start? Drop that in the chat. But, you know, A, B, C, or D. You know, I, I see some people who are confident. I see people who are kind of unsure about how to position yourself in this environment. You know, maybe some people who need to rebrand and some people just don't know where to start. It's important to understand this in the context of your brand, especially as you're navigating your career, because, you know, when you understand that you want to rebrand or you, you need to understand how to brand, it shapes the activities that you do to develop your personal brand. So the next question I have, we've been working in this remote environment, Stacy. this remote environment. And so the question I have for you is, how would you rate your effectiveness in managing your brand virtually during this remote environment? 
You know, are you very savvy, A, you know, and comfortable? Are you uncomfortable with technology and find it a little bit difficult to, are you struggling with having network and build connections during this time? And do you need to pay more attention to your virtual brand? Drop that in the chat, A, B, C, or D. I'm looking, and some people are saying we're struggling with how to network, how to make connections during this time. You know, a lot of people, when we were in the office back in school, we, we took people to lunch. We went out to lunch, we collaborated, we talked, we built connections, we built relationships. Uh, and for those that are professionals or alumni that are on, you know, in, you're working in companies, we went to lunch with our colleagues. I asked the question now today, how many people go to Zoom lunches? And a lot of people say, well, I don't go to Zoom lunches. But when we were together, we took people to lunch, we built relationships, we were intentional. But now the medium has forced us to be less intentional. When you're building your brand, it is important to be intentional about what you do. So we have a virtual connection that we have been navigating during this time. Many of us have been navigating this virtual connection. But this is kind of what it looks like, you know? You know, Stacy, you are thumbnail number 22. Jason Saga, you are thumbnail number five. Nikki Travis, you are thumbnail number 91. I see you, Kate Bakash, you are thumbnail number 42. Kayla McGill, you are thumbnail number 31. This is kind of what it looks like. And you have to build a brand, an identity, uh, you know, the value, communicate value through a little thumbnail. And someone needs to say, hey, Stacey, you got a great smell. I see you. You're, you're thoughtful. You're, you're attentive. You're, 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 you're provoked. You know, you've got, and people need to have a sense of who you are, even in a small thumbnail through a screen. We are always communicating our brand. So as we come, as career advancement comes back, and as we have conversations that come back, understand that we have to be intentional about your brand. But you have to have a performance strategy. So, so for the leaders who are, who are on, for the, the graduate students who are on, those that are working, you should navigate your career. Many of you maybe even a, a period of career change. We have to have a performance strategy, uh, what I call a PPP. And what that means is you have to you know, focus on your positioning, your perception, and your performance. Your positioning, your perception, and your performance. And what that means is if you're going to improve your positioning, you got to expand your relevance. You got to ask yourself, how can I be more relevant to what needs to be done? How can I be more relevant to, as a leader to my team, to the university? How can I be more relevant to, to, to solving this particular problem? And if you're, if you're a grad student interviewing for an opportunity, you have to ask yourself, what can I do to improve my positioning? in terms of my ability to solve a problem, meet a need, grow a result, you know, improve a situation. You have to improve your positioning. Secondly, you've got to create the perception that others have of you. You know, Mike, I see you, Cliff Thurman, I see you. You got to create the perception that, that others have of you. And what that means, you have to set a new standard of excellence. Right? You have to set a new standard of, of excellence. So you ask yourself today, and you may say, you know, I'm pretty good at what I do. You know, I, I come in, you know, I, I'm thoughtful, I, you know, I've got good competency. But what is your new standard of excellence? When you think about elevating your career, and you think about elevating your brand, we have to embrace a new standard of excellence that we set almost daily. You know, and, and the takeaway, when you come back, when you go come back in tomorrow to work, to life, ask yourself, what's my new standard of excellence today? It's just a way to hold yourself accountable. We don't ask ourselves a new standard of excellence. We say, let's just try to get through the day. Most of us, let's just try to get through the day. Let's just try to get through it. Let's try to get to Friday. It's Monday. Let's try to get to Friday. Right? But the question and the opportunity for us all, Stacey, is you've got to set a new standard of excellence. You have to set a new standard of excellence. That's how you drive accountability for your brand. And it's powerful when you do. And guess what? Even if that new standard of excellence is, hey, you know, today I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit more time for me. I'm going to take a walk in the middle of the day because I need to make sure that I am mindful. I'm taking care of my body, my mind, my soul, giving myself a break. Set a new standard of excellence. And then third is give evidence of your performance improvement. And what that means is deliver measurable results and measurable improvement. Every single day that you think that you are tasked with doing something, or if you're a grad student and looking at presenting your credentials, you know, the, your ability to give evidence of measurable improvement and measurable results how did you make something better? How did you, Nikki Travers, say, this was the situation. Uh, I, I inserted Nikki Travers, and all of a sudden, it became better. You know, Mike Lowen, you know, I, this was the situation, and this is what needed to be improved. I grew that result. You know, Cliff Thurman, here's how I shaped the future. Here's how I gave a perspective that shapes how we now think, how we now do, how we now innovate. And when you understand that you hold yourself accountable for being connected to a measurable improvement, a measurable result, that you own, that you know with evidence, you have confidence 
and and it draws really great value for for your for your skill for your, for your time for your effort for your brand so positioning perception and performance cuz you think about your brand it's two questions that come what do you think you're known for and how others perceive you that that's the real question you know what, what do you think you're known for and how how do others really perceive you your boss your managers your team your colleagues you know your, your you know others of your peers and somewhere in the context of that is your brand you know what you think you're known for what you're actually known by but what we're striving for every single day is consistency in, in what we do. So if you think about this, um, if you think about this, ECCF RQCI, I want you to think about your brand today and, and your career today. If, if you had to, to, to drop some words that would that, that go along with these letters, like, like energy commitment, it, you know, what, what, what would some letters be? This is just an exercise with your mind. Give me some words that come to mind using these letters as it relates to your brand. Drop that in the chat. Just This is a mind exercise right now. E, C, C, F, R, Q, and C, I. Give me some words that come to mind with these letters as it relates to you managing your career or your brand. Give, give me, so it's, it's a mind exercise right now. Give, give me some, some, some words. That, es, escalate, okay. Constant improvement. I love it, Samantha. Constant improvement. Constant improvement. I love it. Empathy component. I love it, Tara. Empathy care. I love it, Clarissa. Empathy. Right questions, Robert. Right questions. I love it. Right questions. Give me some words that come to mind when you think about these letters and words that come to mind behind these letters. Empathy care. Right questions. Empathy component. It's powerful when you understand clear focus. I love it. Calling intuition, caring friendly, continuous feedback, creative freedom, creative courage focus. I love it, Kareem. Courage focus, effective communication, restoring quality. Jason, I love that. Restoring quality, engaged and committed. R U M, rum. It says rum. I don't know what your, it's, it's, I don't know if it's rum, it stands for Robert or if it stands for, for, uh, for Roger. But it's just right now it's just rum and maybe it's happy hour. So rum is fine, right? But there are radical questions, committed future, clear initiatives, right? Think about these words. Now, when it comes to managing your brand, classic intuitiveness, I love that. Classic intuitiveness. I agree, engaged and committed, love it. Clear innovation. When it comes to managing your brand, these four things are really important. Engagement currency. People need to know that you're in the game, that you're engaged, especially now working in this virtual environment. Engagement currency. Your brand will be defined by your engagement. You know, as a student, as a professional, as a leader, your brand will be defined by your engagement. Are you engaged in the solution? Are you engaged in the opportunity? Are you engaged in the question? Are you engaged in the innovation? But your engagement, meaning you have to be present in the solution, present in the moment. People need to know you, see you, refer you, actively connect you to being part of a solution. And it shapes your brand. Communication frequency. You know, it's easy to hide when we're working virtually. You know, Stacey, you're thumbnail number 31 now. And, you know, it's easy to, 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 to disappear, you know. So if you're, for example, if you're someone who you're coming as a student, as grad student, uh, just, you know, if you're not on or if you're working in your company, you know, or organization, if you're not on video, it's fine. But then create emotion around your name. Right. So if you're not going to be on video, the video allows people to see a little bit, get some body language, get some energy. But if you're not going to be on video, create emotion around your name. So marvelous Maria Pesanisi, right? right? N Natasha, who, who, is, who is never, who never stops. The, she never stops achieving. Natasha, who never stops, right? Think about it. You got to create emotion around your thumbnail. Orlean, you are open Orlean Woodham. Right? He's open, open to change, open to new ideas. Right? And what happens is when people see your name, hear your name, there's a connection to value, connection to an attribute that warmly connects them to your presence. And it's powerful. So if you have students who are not on video, just help them create emotion around their, their thumbnail. You know, awesome Anna, you know, super amazing Stacy, and, and it's powerful when you do. So relationship quality is the quality of relationships uh, signifies the quality of, of, of your brand, you know, and, and your relationships matter in this environment. Your relationships matter. Take time to build relationships. And that means that when you are engaged in an opportunity, you should be an opportunity where you thank someone, recognize someone, refer an opportunity, connect someone or introduce an idea, you know, and, and the relationships that you build. And I, I'll say this, when you're working virtually as it relates to your brand, there is something powerful by calling people by name, Stacy Gatto. There's something powerful 
by seeing Amanda Campbell, I see you. There's something powerful by calling people by name. Uh, I'll never forget that. You're building relationships, the, the power in this virtual environment, Andrea Glidden, you no, know, Nakia Washington, Maria, I see you, Kayla, I see you. There's something powerful by calling people by name, Dr. Black, Dr. Tyrone Black. It is so powerful, Kayla McGill, Samantha Pryor, I see you. There's something powerful by calling people by name, Tara Hall. It, there's something powerful. So understand that you build relationships by your intention in a virtual environment, especially if you're going for an opportunity uh, for, for, an op for a job. And then contribution impact. You'll be known by what you contribute. And ask yourself every single day, what is something that I made better? Just simply, what is something that I made better? And when you know what you've made better, you are living in your significance. When you know what you've made better, you have a brand that is about excellence, about contribution. So you gotta be confident, you gotta be credible, you gotta be relatable, you gotta be convincing, you gotta be memorable. You gotta be confident, credible, relatable, convincing, and memorable. You know, these five principles around building your brand are so important. You know, you build a strong brand when you are confident in who you are, what you know, when you're credible in what you know, what you do, when you're relatable because people like working with you, connecting with you, when you're convincing and when you are memorable. So owning your career and your brand uh, starts with your mindset. It starts with, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper here uh, just because I want to make sure that we have very tangible language. Uh, so, so right here, you know, your mindset, your presence, your cadence, your performance, and your metrics. And specifically, the narrative that we can shape and ask ourselves is, as a result of my performance, as a result of your performance, you want to achieve. Well, what's the answer to that? In your working style, you'll be known for, what's the answer to that? You will accomplish your goals by being, what's the answer to that? You will track and measure. What are you going to track and measure about your own performance, about your own excellence? And you will set the expectations. What are the expectations you're going to set to shape your brand? When you manage your mindset, your presence, your cadence, your performance, and your metrics, you are intentionally connected to elevating your brand. Uh, and, and it's powerful when you do. Uh, it's powerful when you, you have answers to those questions. So the question Kareen has, how do you become memorable? You know, it's a great question, Kareen. You know, how do you become memorable? You, know, you don't know who's going to remember you or not. But the fact is, you know, you, first of all, you tell people what you want to be remembered by. Uh, for example, I tell people I want to be known as one of the most energetic speakers you've ever seen. And the word energy may follow me, but I told them what I want to be remembered by. One attribute, for example. So, so you, never, you, don't, you may not control what people take as, as what they remember about you. But what you do control is what you tell people you want them to remember about you. So for the graduate students who are who are listening and for those that are you know working or trying to navigate your career, trying to get a new promotion or trying to get a, a, a job, you have an interview, make sure you don't leave that interview without telling that, that hiring manager, here's what I want, want to make sure that you remember about me. And actually through your actions as well. You'll be remembered by your actions. You'll remember by, remembered by your impact, the things that you made better, but you also have to not leave it to chance. I have a saying, I'll say it at the end too, live life by decision, not by default. I sign every book with that, with that, you know, with, the, with those words. You have to be intentional to tell people what you want to be remembered by so they can actually look to see it. So we also have to be strategic and intentional, right? Your mindset, your goals, your brand, your cadence, your performance, and your results. They, they, they all matter. So what that means is you got to know your state of mind. You got to know intently what you want to achieve. In your networking and relationship style and approach, what do you want to be known for? What level of effort, consistency, and tact will help you accomplish your goals? And what are you going to track and measure? And how will you define your own personal success? A lot of times we, we work to create success, but we don't define our own definition of success. So we, we have to have a definition of success. We have to be strategic and intentional about it. So it's all about self-awareness. It's all about self-awareness. It's all about self-awareness. And, and that's what drives the power of our brand. So right now, I want you, if you're listening, I just want to take another deep breath, Stacey. Take another deep breath, everyone. One more, take another deep breath. Okay, so we're all self-aware. We were aware of that breath. It, it's like the same thing with your career. We have to be aware of what you're doing in your career. And the first point, you gotta know thyself. So you got to know yourself. So the first question, I, I want you to drop this in chat. Why, why do people trust you? Just drop a word. Why do people trust you? Drop it in the chat. Well, why do people trust you? Why do people trust you? Why do people trust you? You're reliable. You're calm. 
You're honest. Right? You're kind, authentic. Right? Why do people trust you? You're open and honest. You're dependable. You're honest. You're transparent. You're genuine. You're honest. Why do people trust you? You're integral. You're integral to success, Clarissa. You keep your word. Right? You're awesome, Stacy. Right? Why do people trust you? Why do people trust you? The next, you keep your word. Thank you, Cliff. The next question is, why do people remember you? Kareem, why do people remember you? Right? You're honest and you can keep a secret. Thanks, Tara. Why do people remember you? Why do people remember you? Why do people remember you? Drop that in the chat. What, your personality, you tell a good story, you calm through the chaos. Why do people remember you? Why do people remember your passion, your personality? Right? Why do people remember you? Think about the power you had, you, you had an effect on them. Your funny, your optimism, your humor, your thoughtful humor. You connect them on a deep level. Your charm, Nikki, your charm. Dedication to the students. Why do people remember you? Personality, go above and beyond. The next question is why do people like you? If they like you at all. Why do people like you? Why do they like you, Cliff? Why do they like you, Mike? Why do they like you, Rum? I think it's rum. Rum is Roger. Is it Roger? Is it Roger? All right, good. It's, it's rum. It's rum. Okay, it's rum. I love it. <laughs> it's rum. <laughs> Loud, crazy, happy, fun, and friendly. Amanda Campbell. Why do people like you? Good storyteller. Why do you be easygoing, positive, funny? I'm goofy, smile, sarcastically funny. You're easy to work with. You're kind. Think about it. Why do people like you? Mike, why do people like you, Stacy? Why do people like you? So, the fact is this, you connect with me, you're right? awesome. Right? You make people smile. Why do people like it? And the final question is, think about you in the context of the difference that you make, whether you are an administrator, faculty, staff at Goodwin or University of Bridgeport, or you're studying to make a difference. What is the single biggest difference, the impact that you bring to the university or to a future employer or to your current employer that would not have been brought had you not been here? Meaning if we don't have rum, what do we miss? If we don't have Cliff, Cliff Thurma, what do we miss? If Amanda Campbell is not in, in the building, what do we miss? I love it. I changed the world through my work with students. I love it, Sandy. I changed the world through my work with students. What is that thing? What's that difference you bring? Data and acceptance of multiple perspectives. I love it. Organization, empathy. What do we miss? I bring knowledge, ideas, passion, faith, and positivity. Thank you, Audrey. What do we miss? Storytelling about my corporate experience. Absolutely, Mike. All right. Education. Thank you, Samantha. Ignition, ignition of life. Thank you. Empathy, compassion toward other student situations and struggles. Thank you, Tara. What do we miss if we don't have you? Energize people to take risks and to realize their potential. Thank you. Ideas and challenges. Now, the reason why this is important, just like taking that breath where you were consciously aware of that breath, when you're managing a brand, you have to be consciously aware of who you are, specifically trustworthy, memorable, likable, and results-driven. If you are going to be relevant in, in the, the shaping of your brand, trustworthy, memorable, likable, or relatable, and re results-driven, right? it's so powerful when you understand your relevance. That, that's, that's the key. It's so powerful when you understand your relevance. You know, people will hire you, grad students, if you're on, people are going to hire you because they trust you and, and your capabilities, because they remember you in, in, in a lineup of 50 candidates, because they like you. People hire people that they like and want to be around. And they fact that you can improve the results that, that are objectives for the role that you're applying for. Trustworthy, memorable, likable, and results driven. So the next point is, you know, the second case, you got to know what you want to be known for. You got to know what you want to be known for. You got to know what you want to be known for. So the question I have for you very quickly is, if you had to give yourself three words, three attributes that, 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 that describe the lasting impression that you want to have on someone after an encounter with you, what would those three words be? Drop that in the chat. If you had to give yourself three words that best describe the lasting impression that you want to have on someone after an encounter with you, what would those three words be? Someone said, he said, passion, purpose, and potential. Three Ps, passion, purpose, and potential. What are those three words? If you have to give yourself three words that best describe the lasting impression that you want to have on someone after an encounter with you, what would those three words be? Now, dependable, honest, compassionate, 
dedication, care, genuineness, strategic. I love it. All right, what are those three words that, that you want to leave with your lasting impression? Someone meets you, Rum, they walk out of that encounter. What are those three words? Right, someone meets you, Stacy. What are those three words that you want to leave with your lasting impression? Kind, positive, friendly, authentic, purpose, honest, right? confident, hardworking, friendly. Now, these are the words that should be swirling around you. Organically, you should be hearing these words about you in interactions because you, you said these are the words you want to be known for. So to validate that, these are words that you should be hearing back about you organically in conversations. Kindness, joy, perseverance, committed, personal, honest. The fact is this, the narrative of what you want to be known for should precede the work. If you want to be known for someone who is thoughtful, authentic, hardworking, someone who's confident, courageous, and caring, then, you know, Kareem, you have to say, you know, I want to make sure that, you want, uh, that you know, I, I, I always want to be known as being courageous. And one of the things I'm going to have the courage to do is to give you honest feedback. And, 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 and that's going to be really a part of, of how we're going to drive impact. If you want to be known as someone who is, is, who is a great leader, you know, I want to make sure that I'm being an effective leader. So I'm, I want to make sure that I, I listen to all perspectives. Now the word effective leader precedes the work that you do. Now, people now see you and know you for that attribute. The takeaway here, graduate students, faculty, alumni, you know, administrators who are on, what is the narrative that you want associated with you? And how do you shape that narrative to perceive the work that you do? Because in life, you know, the, the fact is this, you got to know what you want to be known for. But when you do that, you know, you got you to ask yourself, you know, what is it that people see? So when you, we, we talked about this earlier, you know, we asked the question, what do you see? And people said growth and innovation and life and limitless possibilities and soil. The fact is this, you've got to tell people what to look for in you, because guess what? In life, one of the most powerful principles, but simple principles, you see what you look for. Stacy. you see what you look for. And, and what that means is if you don't tell people what to look for in you, why and how should they see it? Graduate students, if you're going for an opportunity, if you're interviewing for a job, if you're, looking, you're posting something you know, on LinkedIn, you've got to tell people what to look for so they can see it. You know, if you're a great leader, and if you're someone who's driving a transformative change and you really are passionate about what you do, tell people that you are looking to create transformative change. And now people are going to look at you as a transformative change agent and they won't miss it because you told them what to look for. It's a simple principle, but it's a powerful one. Because in life, you see what you look for. But oftentimes as professionals in our career, we're so busy. We're so busy that we don't tell people what to look for. We just think that they're going to figure it out. But when you imagine your brand, you got to be that intentional. you got to be that intentional. So I want you to take out your cell phone. Take out your cell phone. I want you to text a friend, someone who is not on this Zoom. Text them. Don't give them the context. Don't give them the narrative. Just text them this, this exact set. You know, what's the first thing that comes to mind when they think of you? Text that to someone now. What's the first thing that comes to mind when they think of you? Text that to someone now. And when you get a response, I want you to drop it in the chat. Text that, Jason, to someone now. What's the first thing that comes to mind when they think of you? Text that to someone now. And let's see what comes back. Text that to someone now. Don't give them the context. Don't give them the narrative. Don't tell them we're on this. So just say, hey, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of me? All right. Text that to someone now. And look, Natasha, let's see what comes back. Let's see what comes back. Let's see what comes back. Let's see what comes back, Stacy. Let's see what comes back. Let's see what comes back, Mike, Cliff, Amanda. Let's see what comes back. Rum, let's see what comes back. Andrea Glidden, let's see what comes back. Maria. Kayla, let's see what comes back. Jay Torres, big heart and big laugh. I love it. Big heart and big laugh. And, and guess what? It's Elizabeth Extrovert Giannetta. I love it. Big heart and big laugh. Makia, what comes back? Right. Smile. Stacy, your smile. Absolutely. Loyalty and strength, Tara. Loyalty and strength. Let's see what comes back. What's coming back? What's coming back, Vivian? Right. Loud, Robert. Loud. Okay. Right. Clarissa, what comes back? What's the first thing that comes to mind when they think of you, Samantha? What comes back? Kind. I think about the words that are coming back right now. You're getting, you know, some people, uh, your friends are taking a little bit longer than you thought that they should. Okay. <laughs> right. Overcomer. Overcomer. Right. Overcomer. Straightforward, truly honest, great friend. Think about how powerful it is when just in an unaided fashion, you know, best friend, honest, loyalty, kind, in an unaided fashion, someone is holding and storing something in their mind about you. And the question is, what is that? And how does it shape your brand? 
bubbly and caring, butterflies, Natasha, butterflies. What's coming back? What are the words that are coming back, Ashley? What are the words? Easy going, no exists, right? Easy going. Now the fact is this, it's same thing that happens with your brand. Someone based on who you are is storing something in their mind about you. Based on the, you know, their life interaction with you. It could be a long interaction and it could be a life interaction. And, and, and that's shaping their perception of you, you know, their, their trust in you, their ability to remember you, to connect to you, the, the results that they believe that you can help them achieve. The question is, what is being stored? And, and, and are you the one shaping that narrative or is someone else shaping it for you? Now, that, that's the question. You know, picture me through my glasses with a smirk on my smiling face while organizing something. <laughs> Sweet. Fun, energetic, strong. You're going to get some responses as they keep coming back and keep dropping the chat, hopeful. So the, the, the next question I have for you is, if you think about your brand and the, the impact that you have and that you want to be known for, if you had to give yourself your own unique, original superhero name based on who you are, how you show up every single day, who would you be? I want you to drop that in the chat room. I want you to drop that in the chat, Stacey. Who would you be? If you had to give yourself your own unique, original, superhero name, loyal Liz. I love it, Liz. Loyal Liz. If you had to give yourself your own unique, original, superhero name based on how you show up every single day, who would you be? If you had to give yourself your own unique, original, superhero name, who would you be? Determined Delilah, the energizer. Determined. Can do dude. I love it, Cliff. The can do dude. Caring. Caring, Samantha, if you had to give yourself your own unique, original superhero name based on who you are, how you show up every single day to life, to work, to opportunity, who would you be? The dynamo, Orlean, the great dynamo. Who would you be, Ashley? Who would you be, Stacy? I'm coming. Stacy, who would you be? Who would you be? If you had to give yourself your own unique, original superhero name, Jason, who would you be? Just Jason. Saga, just Jason. The great Just Jason. The jazz man, Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. I love it, Jeff. Jazzy Jeff, the game changer, Mike, the world leader, Loretta, the game changer, the world leader, Jazzy Jeff, the multi-potentialite. I love it, Andrea. The multi-potentialite, the great multi-potentialite, the adventurer, Maria, the adventurer. Who would you be if you had to give yourself your own unique original superhero name? Who would you be, Ashley? Who would you be? Awesome, Ashley. Who would you be? The fact is this. What do superheroes do? The force of nature, Nikki. Eternal optimist, Kate. What do superheroes do? Think about it. What do superheroes do? Superheroes save the day. Students, graduate students, faculty, alumni, leaders, administrators, understand this. Every single day that you show up to life, someone is counting on you to save the day for a situation. Someone is counting on you to save the day to improve something, to create something, to grow a result, to shape the future. Someone is counting on you to save the day. <sighs> but if you don't know your superpower, what you do every single day to make something better because you are here, why should someone invest in you? Why should someone hire you? It is important to know that you are the optimistic fixer, Stacy, the queen, Nettie. The, the, you know, you, superheroes provide hope, absolutely. The fixer, the, the change agent, the, the multi-potentialite. You have to know your superpower. You have to know the theme song that empowers you every single day to be your best with excellence. And when you do that, you become a hero for opportunity, a, a, a hero for life, and your brand is valued. People hire people because of the hero that you are the thing that you're gonna improve, how you're gonna save the day, how you're gonna help solve a problem, a challenge. So if you're positioning your brand, it, you, the reason why you focus on your brand is because your brand powers your superhero, it powers your ability to make something better. And that's why we celebrate you. But you gotta be consistent. You gotta be consistent. Think about the great brands that you are. I want you to drop in the chat, what's a brand that you are consistently loyal to? Drop that in the chat. What's a brand that you are consistently loyal to? Drop that in the chat right now. What's a brand that you are consistently loyal to? What's a brand that you are consistently loyal to? What's a brand that you are consistently loyal to? 
drop that in the chat. What's a brand that you are considering? Some Republic of Tea, okay. Rodan Fields, James Bond movies, okay. Apple, Starbucks, right? McDonald's, I see, right? What's a mobile, Disney, Seiko, right? What's a brand that you're consistently loyal to? What's a brand that you're consistent? We know why we are loyal to our favorite brands. And you think about the great brands of the world today, they all, Top Man, Star Wars, Pol Poland Springs, we all have the, the great, great brands all have the ability to deliver an expectation of quality, superior product benefits, or defining experience. Okay. But they do this consistently. And when you're consistent, you can be known for something. That, that's, the, that's the takeaway. Is, you know, think about why you're loyal to your favorite brands. You loyal to your favorite brands because of the, their consistency their, and delivering excellence to you, impact to you, comfort to you, you know, quality to you. So being consistent is a real key element of your brand. And, and specifically, you know, this focus is if you are consistent, you can be known for something. Right? And if you're known for something, there's value associated with you. And if there's value associated with you, you become necessary. And if you become necessary, you also become a needed part of the success equation. So graduate students, you have to ask yourself, how are you a needed part of the success equation for the employer that you're looking to get hired from? That's the, that's the question graduate students that you're on. Ask yourself before you go into an interview, how are you a needed or necessary ingredient for the success of the organization or entity or you know, or university or educational institution, whatever that you're going for? Being consistent, it matters. But guess what? It's not just about that. It's also about your social media brand. It's about when people, you know, today people meet you before they meet you. People meet you before they meet you. So what the internet has to say about you and your brand, especially today, is a powerful element in shaping your brand. You know, it's important that you understand that people meet you before they meet you. Because guess what? When people don't know you, but they will refer to you, what's the first thing they do? They Google your name. They, they check you out before they check you in. And in Googling your name, they have an attribute, an, an impact, a little bit of an impression about you before they meet you. And it shapes the interaction with you. So the question that we have to ask ourselves today is, is your online brand consistent with what you want to be known for? Any interaction someone has with you, the first thing they Google your name. And let's, let's fact is, the, the question I have for you all, of, and we'll just do this exercise because this is real. Um, what are you known for based on a, a, a Google search done on you? And how many people have, have Googled their name in the last 30 days? You know, oftentimes what I find when I ask this question, especially when I'm doing it in a live audience, Many people have gone for interviews or opportunities in their career, um, but they but in the in the span of doing that, they haven't Googled their name. You should always Google your name. You should always know at least what's known about you when someone checks you out before they check you in. So the so the takeaway tangibly, if you're if you're listening, is is Google your name. If you, you know, if you you can do it now, you can do it later after this program, but Google your name. And set a set a, a an alert to Google your name, you know, it, often. Sign up for Google Alerts. Absolutely, Amanda. It is an absolute great thing to do. You know, and even if you have a common name, you should always know what the narrative is about you and how that helps you with opportunity or how or it, it gives you a narrative that you have to, to overcome and defend. Some people have, you know, something that they did 10 years ago. Maybe they were, you know, 16, you know, a reckless teen, and they posted something. And it was so questionable. Their judgment was so questionable. It's totally not who you are today. Not, not something you would even support or do today. But guess what? Google doesn't forget. And now you're going for an opportunity. All of a sudden, you, know, you think about your brand and someone Googles your name. All of a sudden, there's something there that is not who you are today. Not something you want factored into who you want to be known for. But it's there. If that, comes, that happens to you, you have to, one, own it. Own it. Own it and say, I did that. It was 10 years ago. It's not who I am, but you know what? I own it. But here's what I did. Here's what I learned. Here's how I've become. Right? Google doesn't hide or Google doesn't forget. Neither should you. But you should own your brand, but also own the improvement of your brand. And there are tools. It's a, it's a tool that gets people fired. Absolutely. You can be fired by a tweet. You spent you know, 20 years building a great reputation, a great career. And one tweet in a, in a moment of frustration erases everything you've done to build a great brand. So your social media brand has to be protected. You know, it's an important component. You know, uh, you know, so, so what you do in terms of connecting with, with people across all social media platforms, understand that it is powerful. Now, here's a question I have for you. What did you eat for dinner last night? What did you eat for dinner last night? Drop it in the chat. What did you eat for dinner last night? What did you eat for dinner last night? What did you eat for dinner last night? Pizza. 
pit pasta. What did you eat for dinner? Chinese food, steak. You didn't eat. All right, Elizabeth. All right, you know, you know, Wendy's, right? Three meat ravioli. What did you eat for dinner last night? Chicken, steak salad, chicken nuggets, Capri salad. What did you eat for dinner last night? What did you eat for dinner last night? Wendy's, right? Roast pork, potato, broccoli. All right, think about that. What did you eat for dinner last night? Vegetable and pan fried flounder. Okay. Vegetable and pan fried flounder. Pork chops. Okay. What did you eat for dinner? Pineapple fried rice. Awesome. Pineapple fried rice. What did you eat for dinner? Elbow macaroni with codfish and vegetables. Okay. Now here's the question. How many times, hot dog and coleslaw. Okay. How many times did you chew? How many times did you chew? Now the fact is this. Most people remember what they ate for dinner last night. But when you ask the question, how many times did you chew? Most people don't remember. It's a concept I call air. You have to pay attention with intention to create retention. Just like this, you know, most people remember what you know, what what they want to be, you know, what they're doing in terms of their role, the role, the the job that you're trying to have. But they're not paying attention with intention to their brand, the, the details of how they show up, how they communicate who they are. You got to air it out with intention as it relates to your brand. Most people know what they ate for dinner, but they don't know what they chewed, how many times they chewed. The only way you would know how many times you chewed is that if you actually paid attention with intention to it to retain that information. It's no different with your brand. You're going to build a strong brand. You have to pay attention with intention to the details you want people to retain. And it's a powerful concept. You got to air it out. So so you think about it. You got to be deliberate and you got to be intentional as it relates to your brand. Deliberate and intentional. And that's how your brand said. But let's face it. we, We have a hero. You know, we know who we are, we're the superhero that we are, but we also have a monster. And what's that? What's the thing that holds you back from being your best? I want you to drop in the chat. So for some people, it's time management or procrastination or, or, or fear or, or confidence or imposter syndrome. What's your monster? I want you to drop that in the chat. What's your monster? What's that thing that, that holds you back from being your absolute best? What's your what's that insecurity? Absolute insecurity yourself, right? Imposter syndrome, right? What's that thing that holds you back from being your absolute best? What's that thing? I think about that. Not having a master's degree, right? What's that thing? Imposter syndrome. What's that thing that holds you back from being your best? Time management, focus, fear, insecurity, intimidation, right? Insecurity, self-doubt, right? Self-doubt. Now, the fact is this: when you're managing your brand and navigating your career. Oftentimes, your your monster haunts you. You have to haunt your monster. You have to haunt your monster. So, for example, if your monster was, hey, I have a lot of self-doubt, you've got to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be confident in this solution, so I'm taking extra time to do research. I want to be confident in the way that I'm coming across, so I'd love your feedback. I want to be confident if I'm, in making the right decision, so I've actually consulted other people to weigh in on, on the, I've got to be, so now, now you put the word confident in front of how you interact. Instead of saying, I have self-doubt, so I won't interact. You haunted your monster by putting the thing that holds you back now in front. And what happens is people see you as someone who is developing something, improving on something, and they support you in that effort. You have to haunt your monster. And it's a powerful way in empowering your brand. So I want you to text this thing to someone. We said we have, still have a couple minutes. But what is one thing I could improve about myself? I want you to take your cell phone again, and, and I want you to text someone. And you're going to get a response. What is one thing I could improve about myself? Text that to someone now, Andrew. Stacy, text that to someone now. What's one thing I could improve about myself? And, and you're going to you're going to you're going to get a response. And when you get it, drop it in the chat. And I'm going to move on. But when you get a response, drop it in the chat. What is one thing I could improve about myself? Someone's going to give you a narrative, a response. And the way that it works with your brand today, someone is looking at you. As, as both some that you can grow something, improve something, um, but also improve on something. You know, improve something, but also improve on something. When you're an interviewing for the grad students who are here, when you're interviewing for a job, people that you may get the question, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And what they're really asking for is, are you self-aware to know what you could improve on? Someone said they got patience. You got a response to that, Robert. Great, patience, right? What is one thing I can improve about myself? Patience. You're going to get a response. It may be eye-opening tonight. Uh, this is uh, you know, maybe even therapy tonight. <laughs> you never know. But this is going to, you're going to get a response that, 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 you know, that, that, that illustrates in someone's mind, they will give you a perspective on something you can improve. 
when you position your brand, it's about the 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 competence that you can that you can that you can convey, but also the things that you can improve on. And when you learn and know what you can improve on, you understand how to present yourself in the context of your brand, communication, consistency. Right. So you're going to get a response back. So the fourth case, know how to accept failure as a part of building your brand. And what that means is when people meet you and you fail at something, and we've all failed at something. Let's face it, we've all failed at something. But when people meet you and you fail at something, you got to say, but here's what I learned. Right? When you fail at something, you've got to say, here's what I learned. Right? Here's what I learned. Because oftentimes you're defined by the failure or you can be defined by the what you did with that failure. So if you fail at something or you have a setback or a crisis or something that didn't go so well, you got to say, you know, here's what didn't go so well, but here's what I learned. And you got to be so excited about the here's what I learned that gets people excited about the continuous improvement that you are. Right? Here's what I learned. The response, not the reaction. Right, right. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the stimulus. It's the response, not the stimulus. Right. It's, it's, it's the, here's what I learned. So understand that that is a part of your brand. And specifically, when you are developing your career, managing your brand, people should know something about you. What you, what you know, what you're proud of, what you're developing, and what you have improved. But what you know, what you're proud of, what you're developing, and what you have improved. And, and it, it really is powerful when you learn from your failures. Absolutely, Tara. Absolutely. So know how to accept failure as a part of building your brand. I'm going to move on. we got to know how to communicate your personal brand attributes. Let's face it. Anyone here struggle with how to toot your own horn? Like how to talk about yourself? You know, you know that, that confidence where you have to tell people actually how good you are, but you really don't want to brag and you don't want to be too arrogant. You know, anyone ever struggle with that? With, you know, how to toot your own horn and kind of most people, a lot of people struggle with how to talk about themselves. Uh, how to communicate their attributes, your, your elevator speech. So your, your elevator speech, you know, I, I define it as this. Who you are, what you do, how you add value. Who you are, what you do, how you add value. What makes you interesting and what are you interested in? Uh, it's important that you have an answer to these questions confidently in talking about yourself. You know, because people will communicate the value of, of your brand based on the quality of how you talk about yourself. So, so Andrea, it is important that we know, we know, you know, how to do this and to be confident in doing it. Um, you know, it's easy to promote others. So hard to promote yourself. Absolutely. It is so easy to, to promote others. And it, it feels like boasting, you know, but, but Jason, you know, sometimes people need to know how good you are. If you're going up against another candidate, the candidate that who is most confident in their ability to, to, to drive a solution and passionate about their ability to improve a situation, oftentimes it will get known and may even get hired. But yeah, sometimes it feels like boasting. We have to answer these questions as it relates to improving our brand. Who you are, what you do, what can you improve in the organization? Why should I hire you? And how do I know you're a good choice? Right, these are powerful questions that we need to have answers to, especially graduate students if you're interviewing for an opportunity in navigating your career. Why, why do I know that you're a good choice? So I'm going to talk about this word advice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you, Jason. You know, sometimes we feel like we're boasting, you know, but Jason, you did something really great. You know, say, you know, Sandy was, 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 was your boss, your future employer, and, you know, and you did something really great, and, and you want to go and let her know, but you don't want to feel like boasting. You want to let your other teammates feel so, hey, but you, say, you go to Sandy and say, hey, Sandy, I'd like to get your advice. Based on a relationship that I had and brought into our organization, we were able to help the organization to achieve $5 million of extra, extra revenue based on, on a relationship that I brought in. I'd like to get your advice and how we could take the best practice of that sales process to help other parts of our organization grow. Now, Jason, all I did, instead of you saying, feeling like you were boasting, Sandy says, tell me more. And all of a sudden you can tell the story, share your, you know, your value that you added because you use this word advice. Everything that you do is connected to future, going, future value. And now you've played, you tooted your own horn to play with a friendly band. And that's why it's so important. I love it. a setback is nothing more than a setup for a comeback. Something you remember. Absolutely. Absolutely, Martin. Absolutely, Martin. So advice is key. So here, here's, we're in the home stretch. And I thank you so much for, for, for sticking with it. When you see this slide, what, what are some words that come to mind? What are some words that come to mind when you see this slide? What are some words that, you know, that come to mind? This is the, the 6K, know how to create your own opportunity. What are some words that come to mind when you see this slide? What are some words? Growth, networking, right? Yeah. Standing out. What are some words that come to mind? Leadership moments, like change, right? Right? Rebirth, anchor, right? The connected, right? 
Oh, what are some words that come to mind? Making opportunities out of nothing, growing, right? The roots connected, strength, unconventional. I love it, Orlin. Unconventional, unconventional. What are some words that come to mind when you see this slide? You know, growth takes many forms. I love it. Agile. Thank you, Stacy. Agile. Prove your worth. Prove your worth. Prove your worth. Now, fact is this. When you're going to create an opportunity for your brand, it's about what I call being an unexpected benefit. So, for example, has anyone ever gone on vacation and you go to the beach and you come back from the beach and you come back to your room? All of a sudden, there's this towel and it's you know wrapped up like a swan. And all of a sudden, you know, you got roses on your, your bed and maybe chocolates on your pillow. Has this ever happened to someone on vacation? If it has, you got what I call this unexpected benefit. You didn't ask for it. You didn't request it. You didn't pay for it. But it was there. And because you got this unexpected benefit, Ashley, you now look for new value in the experience. Towels are softer. Pillows are fluffier. There's no hair in the bathroom. You got this unexpected benefit. And you value the experience. It's no different in your career. You have to be, if you're going to create an opportunity, you have to be an unexpected benefit and you have to deliver unsolicited value. Be an unexpected benefit, Amanda, and deliver unsolicited value. And what that means is you got to give someone something that they didn't expect to get from you, but they got it from you. And now they trust you more. They value you more. They remember you more. And they hire you. So the takeaway here is what is that plus one? What's that thing that you deliver that people don't expect to get? What's that unsolicited value that you deliver? What's the unexpected benefit that they get? It's like having a customer service experience where you know you get something that you didn't request, or, or, or but but it was there, and all of a sudden you're loyal to that brand forever. So that's a, a powerful perspective, you know. And you think about advancing your career, you know, the power of being an unexpected <laughs> benefit. You know, Goodwin hired me. I brought the cookies to the interview. Good, but that's why Goodman hired. So this is Amanda Campbell. Amanda, I'm going to tell you, I, I have to just stop here and tell you this story. Uh, please bear with me. I had an interview once for a job. And what I it was a Friday uh, at 3 p.m. And we and Rum, you know, at Friday at 3 p.m., no one is thinking about work. They're thinking about the weekend. But that was that's what that was my in, that was my interview slot. Friday, Amanda, at 3 p.m. So what did I do? I sent a box of Mrs. Fields cookies to the interview floor. It's because I knew my interview was at Friday at 3 p.m. I sent a box of cookies. So when I got off the elevator and I came through that, in that office, I was the guy who brought the cookies. And guess what, Amanda? I got that job. I was memorable. I aced the interview. But I had a brand even before I had an interview. So the point is, be an unexpected benefit. The things that you do that provide an unexpected benefit, you know, unsolicited value, people remember forever. They remember forever. So I love it. BYOC. I love it, Jeff. BYOC, Jeff. I love it. BYOC. <laughs> I love it. So the seventh case, know and master the art of connection. And that simply says, you know, what is the connection that people have associated with you? When your name is on a piece of paper, Jason, you know, Stacy got to what, what's that quick association people make uh, associated with you? Make sure that you understand that you, the quicker you can make a connection with the attribute you want to be known for, the quicker you are championing. You have a champion way to, for your brand. So when I say, you know, for example, the, the Nike and, and running sneakers, or when I say, you know, Amanda Campbell, what comes back? You know, Ashley Scarretta, what comes back? Understand, we should know the word that you want to come back after someone hears your name, see your name. Because oftentimes that quick association people have with you is the thing that they most remember. That's the thing that they have championing their brand. So I love it. You know, they would have hired you on the spot, Amanda. <laughs> they would have hired you on the spot. <laughs> Bring your own cookies. Who are BYOC, Jeff? I love that. I'm going to, Jeff, we're going to take that. BYOC. Bring your own cookies. So no one master the art of connection. And the question is, when, when, when do others, you know, what do others see when they see you? Now we're in this virtual environment. What do others see when they see you? That's a question. When they see you. You know, I, I, I'm looking at rum right now. That's a cool, I'm just, I, I love, uh, that's my man right there, rum. It's, right, right, right. What do people see when they see you? You know, what do people, so understand that engagement is so important, even in this virtual environment. Um, be engaged and make, make a connection. 
be an unexpected benefit, deliver unsolicited value. And again, these four things, engagement, currency, relationship quality, communication frequency, and contribution impact. I'm going to move on in the sense of time. Uh, networking is a service. You know, networking is not something that you just, you do. It's something that you give. I'm going to say that again. My opinion. Networking is not something that you do. It's something that you give. The, the best networkers, if you're trying to build relationships, you know, there, there are people who are, who are saying, you know, I want to be a giver. What can I do? Who can I help? How can I support? What can I do? Who can I help? How can I support? You know, when you when you are a, a an answer to these questions, and you approach the contacts in your in your network with these questions, that's how you build networking relationships. Because you're giving someone advice, you're connecting someone to opportunity, you're, you're championing them for for a role, you're giving them insights, and that's how you generate a great relationship quality in your ability to network. It's not about who do I know, who do I need to know. That's a component of it, but it's the what you do with who you know. So be a giver. What can I do? Who can I help? How can I support? It's a powerful element in, in networking. You know, on LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is a great channel. Many people meet on LinkedIn. So we, we make, we mention, we search, we share, we comment, we like, we post. There's activity, it's fluid. We make, we mention, we, we, you know, we search, we, we, we comment, we like, we post. And, and, you know, it powers our virtual connection. Um, but we also, it, it, follow-up is, is really important. Help support is absolutely, absolutely. You know, follow-up is so important. You know, you got to have a check valve. You know, check in, check up, check for, check out, check up, check on. What can I do? Who can I help? How can I support? Your check valve is what powers your ability to build networking relationships as you navigate your career. So to make that a part of, of how you show up. So when you think about recalling and, and memorable impression and known impact, when I say French fries, you may say McDonald's. When I say running sneakers, you may say Nike. When I say coffee, you may say Starbucks or you know, in the Northeast, Dunkin' Donuts. Right? But the point is this. When I say Clarissa Harzog or Jason Saga or Amanda Campbell, Stacey Gatto, Nakia Washington, Cliff Thurmer, Mike Lockley, what comes back? Is it, is it a quick connection? Stacy got to a great smile. Is it a quick to Ashley's got to really thoughtful. You know, Mike Lotte, great leader. Cliff Thurmer, you know, amazing, you know, you know, amazing analytical, you know, thought leader. What comes back? And how quick does it come back? When you're building your brand, you have to have recall, be a memorable impression, and create known impact. I'm going to skip this question, but the question that was, if you want to just to, to text this to someone, the question was, what is your most defining memory with me? It's, it's a great question. If you ever want to text that to someone, they're going to give you a response. But your defining moment is the, your presence. So the eighth K is know that silence is not an option. Know that silence is not an option. Know that silence is not an option. I'm in the home stretch for those that are, I know we're at 730, but I'm in the home stretch for those that are keeping our time. So what that means is, you know, every time that you have an opportunity to engage, you, you understand that your brand is on display. And before you have an interaction, you have to ask yourself, why am I here? What will we contribute? And what will they say when you leave? Right? Why are you here? Thank you so much, Liz. What will you contribute? And what will they say when you leave? Three powerful questions before you get on a Zoom, before you get on a, a, a Teams call, or before you get into a meeting, before you have an interview. Why are you here? What will you contribute? What will they say when you leave? This is going to hold you accountable for being present. You know, for delivering value before you have the conversation, you know, before you have the call, before you have the meeting. Because you should always know that the impact is not about what happens here, just like even this session today. It's what happens when you leave. But when you, when you understand that, you know what you will contribute in the moment. So know that silence is not an option. The ninth K is know your expectations, not your limitations. Know your expectations, not your limitations. And what that means is you should always let people know what to expect from you. That's the opportunity. What should they expect from you? Right? When you tell people what they should expect from you, you're now not limited from opportunities of what they may take for granted. Right? Tell people, Nakia Washington, what to expect from you. And guess what? They're going to look to see it. And you're going to hold yourself accountable for delivering it. And it's going to help power your brand. Because oftentimes we may miss opportunities because people don't expect the things that we can deliver. So that's why you have to tell people what to expect from you so you're not limited from opportunities. And it drives and really powers your brand. So we've got to set standards and we have to reduce questions. You know, graduate students, who you, if you're on, we have to set standards, we have to reduce questions. The more standards that you set, 
The less questions people have because they know what to expect, the more it empowers your brand. So, so your mindset, your brand, your cadence, your performance, and your metrics, it all matters. As a result of my work, I will achieve. In my collaboration, I will be known for. I will accomplish my goals by being. I will track and measure, and I will set these expectations for my brand. So set standards, reduce questions. And then finally, my 10th K, we're in the home stretch. Uh, know why you're doing what you're doing today and how it will shape where you're headed tomorrow. Know your why. That's the point. Know your why. What's the why that shapes what you do? What, what's your why? That's the real question. That's the real opportunity. What is your why? And, and how is that? How are you shaping that every single day? What's your why? And once you know your why, you have to honor your why with your effort. You have to honor your why with your effort. So if your if your why is to build a better opportunity for your family, you know, to, to build well, to, to to create a new opportunity for those in your community, you have to honor it with your effort. And that champions the power of, of your brand. So detect the improvable circumstance. All of us who are here, and I thank you so for those that are that are that are that are that are here you know, staying with us. I know at the end of our our, you know, our our time, but we're all in the business of making things better, of improving a circumstance for a life and for a career. So you have to commit, commit to the effort, you know, believe in the solution, have passion for the outcome, and know that your actions every single day that you show up to life and to work are bigger than you. And when you do that, you understand that you gotta you ask for what you want. Students, ask for what you want. Know how to ask for what you want. Because if you ask for what you want in life, in your career, you create the opportunity and the possibility for that to exist. So in closing, I want to leave you with these particular thoughts as you look at this image and you think about the power of your brand. Understand this. You are not just an instrument. You are an amplifier. Your effort today, your effort every single day that you show up to be the best and live your brand, it amplifies the success and the opportunity for someone else who you'll never know and meet, but they'll be inspired by your journey. Because guess what? Success is not a consequence. It's a process. So I embrace that the world has changed, yes. But what are you doing to evolve your brand? What are you doing to be the change agent that you are? So I'm Kaplan Mowbray. This is me. I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn for those that want to have broader conversations, if I can be helpful to you in your career. I know that we have a couple of books that we're going to raffle off. Um, so, so, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And, 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 and Sandy, I know you're going to come back on. But I yes. do want to sign this particular book. Uh, if you are out there, Stacy, if you're out there, Stacy, this book is for you. Just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm going to sign it. Uh, the awesome to the awesome. <laughs> with her smile. This, this is for you. This is for you. Uh, I, I also, for those that, that I, this is for Goodwin, I definitely mentioned it last night. I have a, a 50% discount on books or anything on my website, kaplanmobile.com. Just put in the the, uh, the 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 code 10K Branding, and it, that will give you the books or anything for 50% off. It's a special for, for Goodwin. And thank you so much for putting that. It's in the chat right now. A special for Goodwin. But Stacy. This book right here is for you. So I want to thank you so much. You guys are, I love you, Goodwin University of Bridgeport. Thank you so much for having me. Sandy, thank you so much for your leadership. Dr. Tyrone Black, thank you so much for your leadership and, 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 you know, and the cabinet. Um, but I will stay on for take, to take questions, but first of all, I'm going to turn it back to you, Sandy, uh, for some more. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wasn't he amazing? I mean, it's hard to explain what he's like. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for your inspiring words. For 12 years, you have never let me down. Uh, this message is something we're all going to take to heart. You've given all of us here at Goodwin and the University of Bridgeport an incredible gift. Another big thank you to Goodwin's Department of Student Affairs and Office of Career Services, Goodwin's Vital Voices, and the MSOL program. For those of you who want to hear this again, please know we are recording. And we're going to get that recording to you as soon as we can, but it might take a couple of weeks. So just be prepared. Anybody who's attended, you're going to get an email and that email is going to allow you the information you need to purchase Kaplan's book at half off. And I'm going to tell you, I've owned it for 12 years. So much of my life is based on this. I can't say enough about how great it is. 
It's extremely generous, Kaplan, for you to offer half price. I do want to also tell you that um, my dear friend Stephanie Hertz is going to put a short survey in the chat. You're also going to receive it in an email later this week. Please complete it. Let us know how this went for you. One of the things we want to do is continue to bring wonderful, incredible, dynamic speakers. This is what graduate education is. It's learning beyond a classroom. So I am so grateful. Now, I know we ran a little over, but Kaplan, can you take maybe two questions? I can take as many questions as we All right. So if much. anybody has any questions, but if you can't stay, we totally understand. But honestly, thank you so much for being part of this exciting evening tonight. And we know Steph, Stacey Gatto was very happy because she is a father. Stacey, this is for you, Stacey. It's coming your way. This is for you, Stacey. Oh, thank you so much, truly. This has been incredible. I don't even know where to begin with questions. I don't even know where to begin with my brand. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions? You know, one of the questions I, I'll just start. One of the things that we often get uh, is, "What if you need to rebrand?" I just want to make sure. I, you know, mm -hmm. what, if you, what, what if you have a brand that you need to change? Um, There's a natural process of brand transformation. Um, the first is you have to break a routine so people see you differently. You know, if they see you one way, they will only look to see you the same way. Mm -hmm. so you got to break a routine, whatever that means for you. Then you got to demonstrate capability and contribution. You know, make something happen, improve something, grow a result, demonstrate how you made something better. And you got to share learning. Be an ambassador of the learning that you make. So when you break a routine, demonstrate capability, and share learning, it's a natural, organic process of transforming your brand, especially when you need to transform your brand. Because I know it's a little late. I just want to make sure you know how much we appreciate it. And you can feel free to leave. But for anyone who wants to stay, are there any other questions? Do you have any tips on selling yourself when making a career change? Great question, Amanda. Great, great question, Amanda. Great question. So a couple of things. Um, you, you have to be, one, proud of what you have accomplished. When you're selling yourself for a career change, people want to know, and they hire you for your experience. They, they hire you for what you know, or they hire you for the best practice that you have accumulated. So if you're, if you're trying to make a career change, um, you have to be positioned, you have to position yourself as someone who has done it already, you know, somewhere else. Even if it's a different industry, your transferable skills, if I've done it here, I can help you do it here. You know, and so you have to position yourself as someone who is uh, coming from a, a position of, of best practice and a transferable skill. And you have empathy on your ability to improve a new situation. So, so that's a great way to sell yourself is sell it by the fact that I want to bring my best practice, experience, knowledge, and, and performance improvement to you. Come from a position of strength. Great question. Kaplan, Andrea has a great question. Do you have any tips for boosting your confidence and being able to boast about yourself? Great, great question. Um, you know, oftentimes we don't want to talk about ourselves because we don't want to feel boastful. But then we end, we end up coming across as very shy and bashful. And, and, not, and less confident. So we're trying to, you know, we're trying to not show too much confidence and we come across as less confident. People hire you because you're confident in your ability to improve something. So, so when you, in terms of tips and boosting confidence, have empathy. You know, people so pro people. So I acknowledge that, you know, that the sales team is looking to grow results over the next year and, and they just have new aggressive goals. You know, I, I empathize with that. Um, but what I'm confident in is my ability to help us boost our relationships with new customers. So now if you come from a position of empathy, people champion you. You can be confident in being empathetic because you really understand that there's a need that needs to be solved, mm -hmm. a problem that needs to be improved. So start with empathy and let empathy empower your confidence. Let empathy produce your confidence because empathy is, is, a, is an attribute that people celebrate and confidence is an attribute that people champion. Your new best friend Rum has a um, question. It's my man. How do I make a it's good first impression in a new job? Great question. How do you make so you know people talk about the 30, 60, 90? You know, you got 30, you got 90 days to kind of you know make an impression. So the, the first impression in, in making a good impression in a new job, um, it, it, one is just you know, find a quick, a quick win, right? Do something that most people aren't willing to do. 
you know, find whatever, whatever that is in the context of your organization. What is something that most people don't want to do? Maybe it's a, a mundane task. Maybe it's tactical, but it's a, maybe it's a new process. But find something that people don't want to do that you champion it and take up. You know, and, and then build relationships by, by asking people, volu- be a volunteer of help. Even if it, that means more, when you volunteer at work, it means more work. Yes. But volunteer. I'd like, you know, to offer my help in this. If you see someone who's overwhelmed or, or a department that really needs more support, volunteer to help, you know, be a firefighter, you know, you know, and, 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 and that way you're seen as someone who is a, ser- a you know, providing a service. You're a servant of, 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 of opportunity. Uh, but you're doing things that people don't often want to do. And all of a sudden, you're a champion. Now people rally around you and they celebrate your impression because you were willing to help, but you're also willing to to, to actually you know, take on more, even if it wasn't asked of you. Great question, Ron. Great question. Clarissa, I think this is probably our last question, but Clarissa has a... Oh, I could be wrong. Um, Clarissa has a question. Um she wants to I'm potentially have the opportunity to be placed in a leadership role. What should I do to show I'm equipped to move from an assistant director to a director? Absolutely. A lot of times people will move even from individual contributor to leader or from a role to, to, to be a leader. So the first thing, and I'm going back to your question, um, leaders, people want to see leaders who have vision. You know, you, you've got to be confident in, in your vision to improve something. Um, how you want to develop people. So people processes operations and growth. Uh, people processes operations and growth. And, and as a leader, if you're stepping in, you have to have leadership posturing. You, know, you have to have a vision of something that you believe that you, through your leadership, can improve, both in the operations and with people. You know, because then they go hand in hand. What can you improve about processes, about people, about operations and growth? And when you can come in confidently with, here's my vision, People align to leaders who have vision. Leaders make the mistake of coming into a role because they have a title, but they don't have a vision of what they can improve. So, so the takeaway is come in with a vision. And the vision can always be course corrected. You can always course direct, but, but you, you never get the chance to lose. You lose credibility if you come in with, without a plan, without a vision. So, so hopefully that's helpful for you is, is craft your vision, what could be improved and why you're the person to do it and then develop people to support you in that journey. Kaplan, that was wonderful. Jeff wants to know, when going into private sector opportunities, how can you market yourself and past successes and experiences if you lack the numbers, i.e. I save the organization X dollars? Yeah, so- don't have that. Yeah, sometimes you don't have the metrics, right? Um, but you have the, you, you have the experience, right? you have the experience. So you can say, here's what others you know, have said about me and my work, right? This should be a narrative that you can bring in. Even if it's not the numbers, here's what others have said about me and my work. Here's what I'm proud of in my work. You know, here's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of my ability to help companies improve in this particular area. And here's how I did it. People get attached to the how you do, right? Here's the how I did. But so so, so the, the communicate, I love Jeff. I think you are the BYOC guy, the cookies. Bring your own cookies. BYOC. <laughs> but, you know, you, you be proud of something, um, you know, and, and be proud of what you're looking to help an organization with. You may not have the numbers, but, but people want, people want to know what you're proud of in your work and what you're honored to actually have the opportunity to do for this new opportunity, this new organization. Great question. Great question. And um, Nikki Travers has a question. How can I impress my bosses in my promotion interview? So if, if I understand it correctly, you, you have a promotion, an interview for a promotion. Um, is that right? And, and interview for a promotion, you want to impress your bosses that you're, that you're the right candidate. If that's, uh, if that's how I heard your, your question correctly. I think so. How can I? Pro- so a couple of things. Um, bosses. OK, thank you. Uh, so bosses, you know, think about what, what they're impressed by. Um, sometimes they're impressed by the way that you, your passion for the opportunity. Right? You, so first thing is, you know, your, your mindset. If you're passionate about the opportunity, they're going to be impressed by your willingness to do it. Secondly, you've got to have a plan. Come in, not with just be, don't just be happy to have the, the role or to go for the promotion. Have an actual plan of how you would improve. So, so almost start doing the job before you have the job and say, here's how I would actually improve this situation and why I believe in, I'm, you know, you'd make a great choice in promoting me. So the more that they 
see that you have a plan for how you would improve something, grow a result, the more they have confidence in the ability to promote you for that opportunity. So have a plan, have an example, have a narrative, but but play it out so that you can instill a confidence. So that's one way to impress your bosses. The other way to impress your bosses is to have other people that are influential to them to weigh in on, on why they think you're a great candidate. You know, so if you have your boss's boss or other people around the organization, call your boss or boss and say, hey, I know you're interviewing. You know, you know she's, she's awesome and she'd be great for the opportunity. So that, that's another way to impress your boss is by the people that also weigh in on your behalf. Excellent. Well, I think that's the end of our questions, Kaplan. Once again, on behalf of all of us at Goodwin, we could not be happier that we got to spend two days with you. Thank you oh, so much great. for everything. You guys are awesome. Go, Stacy. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, if I can be a resource in, in any way, I pledge to do so. Um, please, I'd love to stay connected. And, and one day when we all get back together in person, I'd love to yes. come back. And uh, please and I, come and I'll, visit. I'll come back and I'll, I'll bring I'll bring my horn back. Yes. And we, we can jam. We can jam to play out. So uh, that would be that would be that'd be great. That'd be great. And I thank you, uh, Dr. Black, as well, just for your leadership uh, and, and supporting all of the work that we're doing over these last two days. And I'll bring thank Spidey Thank you all back. tonight. It was Spidey's incredible. <laughs> oh, there I'll he goes. Spidey's coming. Uh, this bobblehead is coming. I'll bring it all. I'll bring it all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much. We hope you have a wonderful night. And Kaplan, again, it was well worth waiting 12 years to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so Take much. Take care, everyone. Right, Have a great everyone. night.